Acts 12. I'm almost done. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I came to make something happen. I want you to look at Acts 12. Hear me real good. I honor the Lord for my lovely wife and all of God's people in their respected places. I greet each and every one of you all with the words that Jesus greeted his disciples with. Peace be unto you. Amen. As you're going to Acts 12, I want to say to all the married couples, thank you so kindly. Amen. Last Monday was a great success. Amen. On our marriage Monday. And I want to thank you for that. And I appreciate that. Amen. Our next marriage Monday, amen, will be this month, August. Uh, the last Monday of the month. Somebody help me quickly. Is that the 27th? Amen. August the 27th. Amen. At 7 o'clock. Is it 7 o'clock? 7 o'clock. Amen. Plan to be here. Uh, as you know, food will be served so you can come straight from work. Amen. And come on here. We got you covered. Is that all right? Amen. I, I'm, I'm happy and I'm sad. Amen. I have to make this announcement. Amen. I'm happy to see this young lady furthering. Amen. Her education. Amen. But I'm sad to see her go. But uh, God's going to take and bring her back. Amen. Safe and sound. Amen. And that's none other than Sister Troy. Amen. She's. This will be her last Sunday. Amen. And she's going to college. Amen. Amen. And certainly we bless God. Ever since she's been in this ministry, she's been involved. Amen. She and her mother have come here. Amen. And they got right involved. And, and that's a true sign that somebody is really appreciative of what God has done for them. Amen. They begin to serve. Amen. I say it all the time. Salvation without servitude is suspect. Amen. And so let me say this here. Sister Troy, thank you so much. Amen. She's been in here working in our media ministry, operating the camera, the switchers, and making sure things are in place. And you can count on her. Amen. I love you on behalf of my lovely wife and the life-changing family. Amen. I tell you, I'm crying on the inside. Amen. And we love you. Now, there are others who are going to be going to school. Amen. But I know that this is her last week. Amen. Uh, if there's some others and this is your last week, please make me aware. But I want to pray a special prayer, amen, upon you before you leave. Is that all right? All right. To God be the glory. Sister Troy, we love you, and we know you're going to do well. Come on, clap those hands one more time. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, keep the Anderson family in prayer. I received word that Mother Valerie Anderson's father transitioned from labor to reward. Uh, you do realize we die over here and we live over there amen and so while we're mourning on this side amen heaven is rejoicing and so we want to keep them lifted up during this time of bereavement we are family we are family stay tuned amen. Uh, if you would stay tuned to your uh, church social media uh, page uh, e-blast or however they're going to get the message out concerning the arrangements I, I want to make sure that if, if, if I can be there, I want to be there. And many of you all, amen, they serve this house unselfishly. And so we want to make sure that we're there with them. Is that okay? Amen. So let's keep them lifted. All righty. Uh, one more thing I want to say before we go into the word of the Lord. We live in a social media society. Everything is, is on the iPads, on the telephone, on your telephone, or whatever the case may be. Uh, media, marketing, all of those things are so important. Uh, I tell you right now, you're not going to make it if you do not have a media presence these days. So with that being said, we're building a marketing team. We're building a marketing team. We have people in this ministry, amen, that is their area of profession. And so I've had the opportunity to sit and talk and it is time to build a marketing team. More information to follow. Uh, when I make this announcement, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 40s. I'm, I'm over, amen, 45 mark. And my daughter has to show me sometimes how to operate things on my telephone. Sometimes I just don't know how to operate things on the telephone. I have to sit and wait until they come and help me. I can be a little handicapped with that. I know I'm not by myself. And so with that being said, if you have a hard time logging on to social media, 
and trying to, you know, upload stuff and trying to do stuff, then it's obviously I'm not talking to you about getting involved in the marketing ministry. Amen. This is not a tutorial on how to work your electronic device. I wanted to be kind with that. Now, if you are savvy and you know how to do things and not just know how to work your electronic device, but you understand the importance of marketing and you are a team player. Yeah, let me say that there. And you are a team player. Then certainly more information will follow. We'll put a sign up sheet out and you'll be able to sign up with your contact information. In this next stage, in this next level of ministry, uh, we need volunteers, but we have to make sure we have the right people in the right place at the right time. All right. So we want to make sure we have that. And so let's keep that in mind. Is that okay? All right. Can you give me about 10 minutes and then uh, we're going to pray, we're going to break the bread of life. I'm going to put about 12 minutes on my clock and then we'll get through here. All right. God bless you, Pastor Simmons. Thank you so much for your consistent support. Thank you for your friendship. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Amen. God bless you. All right, Acts chapter number 12. Look at verse number 16. Uh, just give me the first four words in verse number 16, and then we'll come down from this place together. Acts chapter number 12. Father, we thank you for the bread of life. Break it that we all may eat and leave here full. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the first four words in Acts 12 and verse 16. Are you there? All right, let's read it. But Peter continued knocking. You may be seated. But Peter continued knocking. Uh, I've been talking uh, for the last week or so concerning the victory through consistency. Victory. Somebody say victory through consistency. Uh, I want you to understand that there is a clarion call, there is a clarion call for the consistency of the kingdom constituents. Uh, the Lord spoke to me and caused me to understand in his word that we must not be wearied in well-doing, but we must continue to move forward in spite of, nevertheless, and anyhow. The Bible calls us to understand in Hebrews uh, chapter number 13 and 8 that Jesus is consistent because it says that Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I want you to understand something, uh, blood wash believers, that this season that we are in is a season that we will experience great victories. We will overcome oppositions, we will break through barriers, but none of this will be apart from one word, consistency. I don't want to fool you and make you think that you can run, jump, dance, scream, and holler your way into success apart from consistency. Uh, I must let you know right up front that there is a clarion call. God is calling his people and I can hear the voice of the Lord saying, tell the people that I want to do great things for them. Tell the people that I have great things for them. But I need them to be consistent. I need them to be consistent. The Bible says, he that put his hand to the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Parents, it is imperative that we share with our children in raising them that society is not going to favor them. Society, life it's not going to give them a pass. It is imperative that we let them understand that you cannot live as if somebody owes you something. But you're going to have to get out there, come on somebody, and put your hands to the plow and continue to push forward and be consistent if you are going to experience success. Uh, consistency is so imperative, it's so important that uh, Jesus told his disciples in St. Luke chapter number 18, uh, he says that men ought always pray and not faint. Men ought always pray and not faint. And he began to tell them that, listen, if you are going to get your prayers answered, if you're going to get victory, then you must be consistent. Uh, as I look around sometimes, uh, not just here in this church, 
uh, in churches across the country, one of the greatest issues that many of them are experiencing is consistency. Truth be told, truth be told, you can do the study and the research yourself, only 20% of a church's overall congregation is consistent. All right, just let me settle in right there. Only 20% is consistent. So if you have a church of 1,000, only 200 uh, are going to be the ones that you can count on. Uh, for about five folk that will really help me on this one right here. It's not how many you can count, it's how many you can count on. Yeah, 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 uh-huh. Uh, you need Bible, the book of Judges talk about there was a man by the name of Gideon. And he was getting ready to go to battle and he had all of these soldiers and God looked up and said, you got too many. I, I know you can count 32,000, but let me minimize this thing down to those who are going to be consistent, consistent, consistent. Why? Because he wants to give total victory. He wants to give success to those who have made up in their mind in spite of nevertheless and in it. I'm going to preach my Sunday school lesson that we must be consistent, consistent. See, consistency allows uh, for measurement. Consistency allows for accountability. Consistency uh, establishes your reputation. Consistency makes you relevant. Consistency maintains your message. Consistency, it allows you to look back and see where you started and versus where you are now. I said it the other week that commitment will get you started. However, it's going to take consistency to complete it. And a lot of things that we're blaming on the devil is not the devil, come on somebody, is that you need to start looking back and measuring where you started versus where you are. You need to get around somebody that's going to pull the slack out your chain and keep you accountable. Uh, you need to build your reputation, not on what you drive, where you live, how much you make, who your uh, uh, lineage is, but you ought to build your reputation on a reputation of consistency, consistency, consistency. My daughter and I, we were talking the other day, and she began, and I will keep all names uh, private here, and she began to say, Lord, I thank God, I thank you, and, and she began to bless God and talk about how the praise team was coming along and how the choir was coming along, and I began to ask her, I said, well, tell me about uh, this one and tell me about that one. She said, oh, Daddy, they are growing and they are coming along. I go, that's good, baby, and this is what she said. She said, she may not be the best alto, but guess what? She's always He's there. That just flew right by somebody's head. Uh, she may not be the best soprano, but she's always there. Why are y'all looking at me sideways like this? She said, and truth of the matter sometime, daddy, ain't none of us always hitting the mark. But guess what? Dre know we always going to be why y'all looking at me and and what encouragement it is to know that I may not have it together I ain't getting no help but as long as I can keep on keeping why y'all looking at me as long as I can keep on pushing let me drop this in your notes right here God is not concerned about your watch this here perfection he's concerned about your progress and you will never progress if you're not consistent. Some of us, you got people making you feel that if you can't do it like they do it, then you're irrelevant. Why y'all looking at me like that here? But the truth of the matter is you might step to the plate every now and then and hit a home run. But guess what? Can you come back and do it tomorrow? Can you come back and do it the following day? Look at somebody and tell them how consistent are you how how consistent how devoted how dedicated are you not just to God but to your family how dedicated and devoted are you on your job how dedicated and devoted are you to your planet fitness membership don't look at me in that tone how devoted and dedicated are you can somebody really depend 
depend on you even when things don't look good are you consistent in this season because if you're not I got good news for you baby God is getting ready to light a fire under you and cause you to get up off your blessed assurance and get done this month what you should have got done the last six months would you look at somebody and tell them get ready because consistency is getting ready to hit your house i want you to understand something here and i begin to close here uh your condition does not determine your commitment uh, i'm speaking that here prophetically your condition should not determine your commitment your condition should not determine your consistency when david said i will bless the lord at all time he was talking about when he had it and when he didn't have it he was talking about in the good times in the bad times in happy times in sad times there must be a level of consistency at all times you know paul and silas they were praising god before they got locked up evangelists they were praising god in spite of and nevertheless and anyhow but when it was tested the bible says that at midnight Paul and Silas begin to pray and sing praises unto God and because they were consistent in singing praises and consistent in blessing God, God demonstrated his power in their lives. What are you saying preacher? There are a lot of things that we're believing God for that are not going to happen until you develop a level of consistency until you get in your mind that if it don't happen on Monday, I'll be back Tuesday. If it don't happen on Tuesday, I'll be back Wednesday. If it doesn't happen on Wednesday, I'll be back Thursday. Am I talking to anybody in here that is sick and tired of being sick and tired and you can't find anybody else to blame your shortcomings on? Well, I admonish you to look in the mirror and decree and declare, I've got to take responsibility for where I am so that I can get to where God wants me to get to. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. This is not the season that I come back and say woulda, shoulda, and coulda, but this is the season where I'm going to say it was the first Sunday in August and Bishop preached the message that pricked my heart, that converted my mind, and I decided to put my hands to the plow and keep on pushing despite the rain, despite the snow, despite the hell that's falling. Is there anybody in here that's determined you're going to win in this season? And the only way you're going to win is that you've got to make up in your mind that I got to be consistent. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Your, your, your success is locked in your consistency. God told Joshua, Joe, he says, listen, Josh, as I was with Moses... I'm going to be with you. I will not fail thee, Joshua 1 and 5, nor would I forsake thee. You're going to be able to count on me, Joshua. You're going to be able to know that I'm here with you through it all, Joshua. You're going to know right now I'm not going to leave you. Joshua, I'm going to consistently be with you just like I was with Moses. And then he began to tell Joshua in verse number 8, now this is what you've got to do. You've got to meditate therein in this law that I'm giving you day and night that you might observe to do according to writ that's written in then look at somebody and tell them then then shall thy make thy way prosperous see the problem is is that many people are being deceived in this day and time and you think that because you high five your neighbor and touch three people it's going to happen look at somebody and tell them i need you to come back next week and high five me uh-huh i need you to come back next week and shake me uh-huh you can't run around this church and open your mouth watch this here give one good offering and think that everything is going to change in your life i'm sorry that i just mess you up here no baby it don't happen like that you've got to be consistent we've got to be able to count on you there are some folk right here i ain't getting no help and i know you mad but that's all right i'm gonna preach my lesson because i want to see you bless here we don't know when the next time we gonna see you we can't depend on you to do jack because we just don't really know if we can depend on you to show up or not why are you looking at me like that nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor he might be talking about me we just don't know if you're going to show up to 
Bible study. We just don't know if you're going to show up to prayer meeting. We just don't know if you're going to be here next week in 8 a.m. worship service. So because we don't know, we can't put no responsibilities in your hand. And where there is no responsibilities, there will be no rewards. Why y'all looking at me like that? Here, yeah, but God is calling for people that he can consistently count on people that will be there in spite of nevertheless and anyhow this is what he said in Galatians 5 and 7 he says you did run well but who hindered you you started out doing good but what distracted you what caused you to begin to become watch this here disoriented and delusion what caused you to take your hands off the plow look at somebody and tell them get back in the race Get back in the race. Get back in the race. Get back in the race. I would do you a great disservice to come in here and tell you that by this time tomorrow, everything is going to be all right, knowing good and well you ain't consistent. Tell you that you're going to come out of that financial slump knowing good and well that you're not consistent. There are some enemies to consistency. And God began to deal with me and he says, let the people know that I'm getting ready to annihilate every enemy that's coming against their consistency. Oh my God, there, there are some enemies. If you would look at St. Mark, oh my God, chapter number four. There, there are some enemies that's keeping you from hitting the mark. There are some enemies that is keeping you from pushing and merging forward. And God simply says, I'm getting ready to deal with every one of those distractions. I'm getting ready to deal with every one of those dilemmas. I'm getting ready to deal with every opposition, every enemy that's coming against your consistency. And so while you keep your face set like a flint and you keep pushing in spite of and nevertheless God says, I'm getting ready to move everything that's trying to come against you to stop you I'm getting ready to deal with it so you can keep right on marching and arrive to your destination at the appointed time would you look at somebody and tell them I just want to be more consistent St. Mark chapter number four here I'm going to give you about four enemies that God is dealing with that is coming against your consistency he says the sower soweth the word Verse number 14, 4 and 14. The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth. In other words, there is a consistent regimen of the word being sown. The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. I want you to get that. E-T-H, soweth the word. The word is constantly being sowed, but then there are some enemies of your consistency he says and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor the enemy is trying to deceive you the enemy is trying so, so the number one the number one enemy against consistency is deception you want to keep going, but after a while, the enemy starts deceiving you and take that desire away and keeps taking that, 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 that seed that was sown in you and you're being deceived. The same enemy that deceived Adam and Eve in the garden is the same enemy that's in the earth, according to Revelation chapter number 12. And he's out here trying to deceive us because you know, his, he knows that his time is not long. But the Lord said to me to tell the people of God that if you would sit right there in your seat and open your mouth and begin to bless him, God says, I'll begin to deal with every level of deception. I'll begin to move every level of deception out of your way. This will not be the season where you'll be deceived. The things that you fell prey to in the last season, in the last 10 years of your life, God said you will not fall prey to that. The word that is being sown now will germinate and take root in your spirit. And this thing that you're being impregnated with in your spirit, you will not abort or miscarriage through inconsistency. You will bring it forth in this season. I need you to open your mouth and begin to bless God because he's annihilating deception deception he says and these are they verse 16 likewise which are sown on stony ground stony ground that disturbed ground there's an imbalance 
There, there's a, there, there. It's not level, it's, it's stony. It's a distressed place. He says there's another enemy of consistency. Not only, dis, not only deception, but watch this here. Disturbed ground or distress. And whatever it is that's been distressing you, whatever it is that's been stressing you out, that caused you to feel that you can't stay consistent, God says open your mouth and lift your voice because I'm coming against every area of distress, every area that is coming to keep you back, to keep you from moving forward. Whoever it is that is trying to stress you out and try to play the puppet master over you. God says I'm getting ready to cut those strings because in this season I need you to be consistent and if there's anybody that's trying to disturb you or distress you don't be surprised when they start dropping like flies because I'm getting ready to come against every disturbance. He says I'm going to make your crooked ways straight, your rough place smooth. I'm bringing up those low valleys, bringing down those high mountains. Why? Because I'm so serious about your consistency consistency look at verse 18 and these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful sown among thorns thorns those things that keep distracting you cares of the world those things that keep buffering at you and distracting you he says I'm getting ready to deal with those things I'm getting ready to deal with all of your distractions I'm getting ready to deal with everything that keeps coming to distract you to pull you away watch this here from that consistent financial plan I put you on from that consistent diet plan I put you on from that consistent time of spending time with your spouse I put you on all of those little distractions the locust the canker worm the palmer worm why y'all looking at me like that here all of those distractions Distractions. He says, I'm getting ready to get rid of your distractions. I'm getting ready to get rid of everything that's disturbing you. I'm getting ready to move everything, Lord have mercy, that's trying to deceive you. Because in this season, success is going to rest on you so heavy. And it's going to come because of your consistency. But I hear you in the Holy Ghost. I can't be consistent, God, like I want to be. Because I keep falling prey to deception. I can't be consistent like I want to be. Because I keep getting disturbed in my spirit I can't be consistent like I want to be because I become so easily distracted but I heard the Lord say if you open your mouth and begin to bless him right now that he's releasing a wave of glory that's resting upon you that's getting ready to deal with everything that's trying to deceive you get ready to deal with everything that's trying to disturb you get ready to deal with everything that's trying to distract you why so that you can keep on working talk to me Nehemiah why Nehemiah was working on the wall the the Bible says that they came and tried to disturb him, tried to deceive him, tried to distract him, but he put a weapon in one hand and a work tool in the other hand. But I come to let you know right now that the weapons of God are getting ready to fall on your behalf. That God simply says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God of the pulling down of stronghold. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places. And God says, I'm getting ready to launch a spirit oh my God of attack on your behalf and everything that is trying to deceive you everything that's trying to distress you everything that's trying to distract you I'm getting ready to deal with it and he says all I want you to do is open your mouth and just begin to give me glory and honor right there because as you begin to give me glory and honor right there I'm getting ready to war so you can keep on working I'm getting ready to stand and resist so you can keep your regiment I'm getting ready to conquer your enemies so you can maintain your consistency I need you to look at somebody and tell them in this season there shall be no failure in this season there shall be no mediocrity in this season there shall be no gray area I've got to make up in my mind that I'm going to push on despite all nevertheless and anyhow why because my victory is in my consistency would you open your mouth and give God glory for the level of consistency that you're about to step into to somebody say yes watch what he says here I'm going to deal with it the deception the disturbance the distractions 
But look at verse 20 of St. Mark, chapter number 4. Look at verse number 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. Lord, have mercy. Good ground. Here, here's the good ground. No deception. No distress. No distraction. That's the good ground. And God simply says, this is what your ground is about to look like. No deception. No distraction. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God is moving out the ground. These are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive the word, bring forth fruit. Okay, if this don't help you, I don't know what will. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. God says if you just stay consistent, I'll launch a war against those things that are coming against you and you're going to bring forth some 60, some 30, some, y'all looking at me sideways. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that means that every area of my life is getting ready to increase. Why? Because God simply says you're going to stay consistent while I launch war against every demonic attack that's coming against you. Open your mouth and tell him thank you. Hear me good. If we are going to be successful, we must acknowledge that we must be consistent. I said to my daughter the other day, I said, sweetie, don't fool yourself. Success is in consistency. I sent my son a text the other day and I said, son, Work on consistently being consistent. You can't make the club in the tub. Work on consistently being consistent. You may not be the best, but guess what? I'm always here. You can count on me. I said, now son, this is going to require a decision. This is going to require another direction in your mind. This is going to require denial of your flesh in order to birth this level of devotion. See, I'm done. Luke 9 calls us to understand in verse 23, if any man will come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Take up his cross. If any man will come after me, if any man, that's a decision that must be made. And I don't want you to walk out of here fooled and think that consistency is just going to fall in your life. You got to make a decision. This is my decision to be consistent. I, 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 I'll excite you in a minute here. This is my, this is my decision. But I'm going to come after God. I've got to change the direction of my life. The way I'm going, by the time I retire, I'm going to have to depend on other people to take care of me. I've got to change the direction. The way I'm going, the way I'm eating, the way I'm not getting proper rest, the way I'm not dieting and, and eating the right food, I'm going to be somewhere hooked up to a machine four days out the week. I've got to change the direction of my life. The way I'm going, I'll always be working. If I got to put happy faces on people at Walmart, I'll always be doing something. Why? Because I won't change the direction of my life. I know you don't like this, but it's God's truth. And do you not understand that when Jesus came from glory, he came to change the direction? You were destined for, oh my God, for doom and dismal. You were destined Watch this here, to fall and never rise again. But thanks be to God that gives us the victory. He came to change the direction of your life. How did he do it? He denied himself. He says, let him deny himself. Here it is. Take up his cross. There it is. Daily. Take up his cross daily. I, I don't know where people get this mindset that you can be a crossless Christian. That I can be a Christian and not have to worry about taking up the cross. The true qualification for Christianity 
is that you got to take up your cross. Not on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but you got to take it up daily. Well, I'm done. I'll excite you later. But I want you to understand something here. Speak softly. Promise. I don't want to go there. I want you to understand something, my brothers and my sisters. That if we are going to be successful, collectively and individually, it is going to take a level of consistency. The Bible says that Peter was locked in jail, but he was able to rest between soldiers in prison because the church was consistently praying for him. And because the church was consistently praying for him, Sister Vereen, God interceded. He did not intercede the first time they called, they consistently prayed for him. I don't know how long they were praying, but I do know that if you keep on keeping on, God's going to show up. And the Bible says that the, God sent his angel and touched him on the leg and he came out of that prison. And when he came out of that prison, you know, I like what Peter did. He went to the place where the people were praying for him. Wouldn't that be nice if folk consistently came to the place where people were praying for them? I ain't getting no help. Now here Peter was, he was in a place of restriction, but consistency broke that restriction. He was in a place where he needed God to do something and consistency answered his request. What are you saying, preacher? I come to let you know that God told me that consistency is getting ready to break that restriction. That financial restriction that you're in, that physical restriction that you're in, that mental restriction that you're in. God said, if you can just ignite a spirit of consistency, I'll break it. He says, and after that, he got his release. And after he got his release, he came to the place where they were praying to make a positive report. And I come to let somebody know right now that when Peter got to the house and he started knocking on the door, the Bible says Rhoda came to the door. She heard his voice, but she was so discombobulated. She began to tell him, hey, hey, y'all, you can stop praying consistently because the thing that we've been praying for is on the other side of the door. Here they were praying when the answer was on the other side of the door. And because the answer was on the other side of the door, Peter stayed outside. He could have walked away because he was free, but the Bible says Peter continued knocking. And I come to let somebody know that you're at the door of victory. You're at the door of destiny. You're at the door of your breakthrough. You're at the door of your miracle. And God says, just because they don't open it the first time, keep on knocking. Just because you don't get the first yes, keep on knocking. Just because they don't swing the door open and have a party for you, keep on knocking. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, this is not the season to stop knocking. Keep on knocking knocking everybody on your feet keep on knocking he consistently knocked at that door what are you knocking at what are you knocking at what door are you knocking at believing God to open that door and make a way out of no way look at somebody and tell them you got to keep on knocking keep on knocking keep on knocking despite what it looks like despite what it feels like they're excited on the other side of the door but keep on knocking Slip those hands up. Keep on knocking. Don't seem to be going the way I want. Keep on knocking. It don't seem to be opening the way I wanted to open. Keep on knocking. And I hear the Lord saying right now that that door is getting ready to come open. They're not going to believe it. They couldn't believe it. Peter, that's Peter on there. No, he's in prison. Yeah, but we've been consistent. No, he's in the place of restriction, but we've been consistent. We need God to answer our request, but we've been consistent. He's been released and he's on the other side of the door to report victory. Keep on knocking. Spirit of the living God, come down just a little bit. God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you birth a spirit of consistency in the hearts of your people. God, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you ignite spirit of fervor and consistency in your people God we will never be successful to the place that you desire us to be if we keep looking back if we keep becoming emotional if we keep allowing the thorns the thorns of offense the thorns of something I did not like the thorns of something I heard, the thorns of something that didn't feel good to distract me. 
God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give me the fortification to deal with distractions. God, we'll never be consistent if we keep being stressed out and disturbed. Every time we hear something that don't sound right, I take my hand off the wheel. Every time we experience something that don't feel right, I walk away from it and go back on what I promised you. Every time something comes to disturb me, the road is not smooth, it's bumpy and it bothers me. And I keep making excuses on top of excuses on top of excuses. God, in the name of Jesus, shake your people right now. So that they come out of that mindset of allowing things to disturb and distress them. And God, I praise you right now that you're taking care of every level of deception even self-deception deceiving ourselves saying things to ourselves having conversations with ourselves there's no other deception that can really mess you up like self-deception to thine own self be true stop deceiving yourself there are more for you than that are against you this would not be the season that you talk yourself out of what God has put you in. The altar is open. I know. This is not the type of lesson that people will run to the altar because there's no materialistic possessions connected to this one. This is just total surrender. It's unto God saying, God, help me deal with deception. Help me deal with disturbance. Help me deal with distractions, God to birth a place of total devotion come to this altar right now your life is getting ready to change I just want to pray with you in in the name of Jesus things keep causing me to push the mark but the devil is alive yeah yeah your consistency is what God is requiring. I used to do, but something hindered me. I used to go, but something caused me to teeter and totter. I used to give it my all, but I felt like I wasn't being appreciated. I was disturbed and distressed and I became inconsistent. And now I live a mediocre life. That day ends today. God, I used to fast and pray like I was supposed to. I used to study my word. I used to talk to you on a regular, but somewhere I've fallen off the mark. But I hear God simply says, I'm consistently calling you back to me. I'm consistently wanting to reunite myself with you. I'm consistently wanting to engage myself with you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The altar is still open. There are others that should be here. Don't let your flesh win in this season. Let your faith override your flesh. This is not just about your church participation. This is about every area of your life. I don't want this spirit of inconsistency to rest on my children and my grandchildren. Yeah, I could do better. I could be better, I should be better, but I'm not, and I need your help. Come on, don't sit there and let this opportunity pass you by. There's a harvest coming and don't you miss it. Slip those hands up. Spirit of the living God, I pray in the name of Jesus every individual that has come to this altar. I pray now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this be the greatest season of their lives. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that they experience a level of increase that's unimaginable. Because number one, they told you, yes. God, Keep a fervor in their spirit. Allow this consistency to rest upon them in every area, God, and allow them to come back with the report 
that because of my consistency my restrictions were broken because of this consistency God there was a release and I got my request God because I didn't give up in the face of adversity I kept pushing like Paul and Silas when they were locked in jail 